Hello, how you doing? Yeah, it's your painter in residence. I'm Francis McCarthy. <laughs> no, I'm American. If you're new to the channel, I'm just messing around. Um, in fact, if you're new, it's a great day for you because we are going to be doing some basic, basic stuff today. Stuff that people have been asking for. I'm going to help you out. So, what we're going to be doing today is limited palette, but it isn't going to be, you know, limited black and white or limited um, siennas or sepias. It's going to be what I, what I started with and what I recommend people that are trying to learn color mixing. It's the palette I recommend you start with instead of like uh, saying, oh, what does Mike use? Well, I started with this and now I use like 14, 17 colors, something like that. Um, the palette that we're going to use today is based on this gentleman. I'm sorry, I don't have his main book. This is his second book. Uh, it's Kevin McPherson. Really great book. If you are just uh, learning to paint, get both of his books. He's really good for someone starting out. He works in an impressionist way, but he's got a lot. I was so lucky that I found it when I was starting out. This book looks pretty much new. I've had it for years. I don't know when I got it. I won't bother taking your time figuring that out. But uh, he recommends using a limited palette. And one of the things that you do with limited palette, first of all, you learn how to mix your colors. Because you only have, in this case, we've got three colors yellow, green, oh yeah, he likes to do, and we will too, we'll do, um, they know. he likes what he calls Windsor Green, which is like, um, sort of like Thalo, it's like a Viridian, I worked with Viridian for a long time, yeah, so that's going to be our palette, we got, uh, Cat Yellow Light, Alizarin Permanent, Alizarin Crimson. He uses Ultramarine. I don't like Ultramarine. I was looking for a tube. I probably should have one around. I just, I gave it to a student or something. That's Thalo Blue. Uh, you can tell there's some sort of, <laughs> some sort of uh, problem with the tube there, but it is, it's, you know, it's all good. Um, he uses uh, Winter Green, um, which is like a Viridian. And we're going to use Thalo Green and good old titanium white. The other thing, he's one of these anti-blackers, you know, but I'm not. And I had this on my palette. That's a bit of black spinel. Could be black ivory. Won't matter too much. We're not going to be using a lot of it, if any at all. So, um, honey, yeah. that's all right. She's instructing the cat what's for dinner so we're all good yeah all right um let's get a little bit we don't need now i'm doing a five by seven that's one of the things i got off of kevin as well he said to do a ton of little paintings and uh that is what i did and it was good advice so i don't need a lot of pigment now one of the reasons i'm doing this today is i am moving i'm moving into my new old studio. I got the, I got it all painted. I got it all um, swept up. I got most of the odor of the uh, mouse urine out of there. It was from mice camping out for the time. Uh, no one ever occupied it after I left. It wasn't meant to be. So this is a sort of a palette based on the primaries, but a little blue. Um, they're, they're modified. The only one that's super primary looking is the Cat Yellow Light. Get a little green off in a shad. I don't know whatever he does. It probably matters though, because... Okay, so here's our limited palette. I'll zoom in for you. You want to learn painting? Start with a palette like that. Yellow. I like crimson. Crimson's very flexible. You mix these together, you get kind of an ochre tone. Um, this is Thalo Blue. He uses Ultramarine. 
I if I don't afraid of being ugly color, but uh, whatever. It's the idea is that this is um, going to work for us to teach us about color mixing, and so I'll be I'll be a little bit more zoomed out than usual. I'll be sharing every color mixing bit that I do. I'll be sharing a lot here. It might be a long video, but like I said, if you're starting out, this is the one for you. Okay. This is the one that you are going to get a lot from. Now, our reference, did you see that? Very similar. Actually, this is a reference from a photo I took back in 2006 or seven. my old power shot. It's not the most inspiring reference, but we'll make a painting from it. I didn't mess with it much. One thing I did is I replaced the completely blown out white sky with kind of a muted sky. Okay, and nothing fancy because it's not really about the sky. So um, now I'm not teaching you necessarily uh, Kevin McPherson's techniques uh, or any of that. Um, I'm not even, I'm just saying that's a good book. I recommend getting that. I also recommend getting the, uh, it's called. Uh, the Painterly Way, and that is by Bob Rome, another great book. Those two books, they got me started big time. Yeah, um, I believe the medium that McPherson uses was uh, Gamvar, or not Gamvar, um, what's it called? It's there, it's the Gamblin equivalent of this. I don't care for it, it's got a bit of more, too much gloss for my taste. So, only my Gamvar. I use Gamasol, and sometimes I use Gamvar, which is the varnish, but uh, I can't remember the name of their medium, but you might like it. You can give it a try. He likes it. Little brushes. I know. You forgive me if I'm a little discombobulated because I just I just have to my brushes. I'm, st I'm, I'm starting another studio at the other... Why does that not seem clean? I guess it is. Um, you know, another studio, and I want to just basically be a mirror of this. Now, another thing I opted not to do uh, was rub this down with oil without use. So, here's a board I prepped. This is a pine board from some pine ply. Um, I actually have a, a brown, dark brown on one side. This side is going to be kind of a like a raw sienna sort of tone. And um, I'm going to share with you my oiling out technique, my oil down technique. A little oil. Oh, I should say our medium is Archival Oils brand, Odorless Lean, the oil painting medium of champion oil painters. So I sanded the board down to get it smooth. There was quite a lot of grain on it. Um, by the way, I recommend on this grain, it's good to have a horizontal grain. Um, now I've got, I don't want it soppy with oil, so I wipe it down and I wipe it off. It's a little bit of a waste, but it'll be worth it if we have to erase. Okay, get rid of that. Got paper towels. We have more paint if we need it. Um, what was the last thing I wanted to talk about? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Nothing. Can you see the reference? Yes. Now I'm going to drag it over. Hold on. Yeah, I have my phone in the other room there. Okay. Uh, when will we be painting in the new studio? I don't know. Now, a lot of times if I was going to do my drawing, I'd do it with black, but I think what we'll do instead, and I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see me I'm doing some color mixing. I'm going to mix a tone that's a little darker than this, so well, I'm going to be holding this palette up a lot. I'm going to check in, looking for a little box with a little bit of dark. A little glare for you, but this will uh, save me. So, um, you, see, you can see a little bit of that board there. See the board? I want a color that's a little darker than that. So, crimson, yellow. So, 
this is all about and then of course modifying with blues so there's your basic color but the top of this is going to change it something kind of green so the thing is with this sort of approach that's getting into a brown like that a little more crimson I don't teach without black, so I'm throwing some black in, which gave me more of a green feel. McPherson's a, I don't uh, teach us without black guy. And good on you, Kevin. I don't know if he's still going. Yeah, you can see I'm getting pretty good brown there, right? That's going to be my drawing color. Yeah, we'll keep that handy in that little box. So the thing about this sort of approach, of course, everything's kind of opaque -y. Um, No, I don't love this reference. It has some nice things about it. One of the things I like about it is the way the light's hitting off on the side there. the brown I mean you might have on my palette I might have like uh, burnt sienna right that's my friend Jenny by the way singing big road one thing I don't love about it is that it's like this basically it's a triangle so you may not see it as that but you should definitely be thinking composition and if you're thinking composition so I'm breaking things up it's nice oh, I don't even need this not don't know but that'll help me get my bearings So, um, oh, this knife sucks. Don't tell me every good knife is at the other new studio. And you just my freaking karma. I do not like this knife. Not much better. Okay. Can you see the reference? Oh, you cannot see the reference. Let's get it zoomed out. Now in this reference, there's like a one back tree back here and another light tree in front. I have no idea what we're going to do, but this is another triangle. Bad news. This is look like it's spring or fall or there's not many leaves on the trees. Uh, so we're going to be like, we're doing something, but we're using this as reference. We're going to be making changes. Also, I don't like big diagonals like that. I'm going to make a lot of changes, so that might be good for you too, just to see. I wanted to use a photo that wasn't like super great, super special, so you could get an idea of um, sort of approach. So notice to set up just this big diagonal, I kind of made a straight bit and then something coming off of it. Also, we're going to keep this pretty loose. That's one, Kevin has a really nice style. Now 
this is on. I think it might even be a parking lot back there or something. It doesn't really matter. Um, we're feeling our way through. Um, so, should you should you learn without black? Okay, I'm going to tell you why teachers don't like black because black will create so many ugly colors in a hurry. But, I mean, I teach adults, not children, so I figure once you've been told that and you know it, you just use black for its fantastic properties that are quite difficult to do without for me. We'll see, I'm going to do my best not to get into much black here. Also, so I'm going to show you his black. And it's very powerful. It's super powerful, and it's actually the black I used for ages. So I'm designing you here, you see, you see what's going on. Don't have your tree limbs hook up in the same spots. One tree. Second tree. the oil on the board just would have been stained. Not the end of the world. Sometimes I forget to put the oil on and it ain't the end of the world. Decent amount of foliage there. We're going to keep going though for now. Um, done my drawing with black like I usually do but I didn't because okay we got some more trees here oh actually that's like one tree with like three things coming out In fact, definitely you want to reduce quantity of branches. You want to make things clear. These trees actually have white trunks. Whether I will paint them that way, it's debatable. Let's see how we do. I don't know. There's a lot of things I don't know right now. So, key more lessons like, yeah, you gotta simplify. You gotta. You can't just. Um, you can't just copy what's there and think you're gonna get a great painting. There's way too much going on in most nature scenes. You gotta simplify. Different colored 
trees here. Not like that. No, I don't need that straight back there, but you know, you can see what I was thinking. I was thinking, yeah, so I made it, I was thinking straight. Yeah, we don't need to worry about that. What we're gonna do is here, some foliage. Sorry, sometimes the volume goes up on some of these. <laughs> Without leaves, he does winter scenes. You know who you are. Man, I see a jiggy. <laughs> anyway, I, my, I, you, 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 if you see me do a tree with no leaves, I have done it, and there is one on the channel or two. You could find it. Um, but I, I can do it, and I have, I have strategies for that, but. For the most part, um, I don't like that. Okay, so one thing that's kind of nice, that's looking nice, it's looking nice. So, limited power, what's the advantage? For, for one, we just learned how to mix. This is kind of a burnt sienna, almost raw sienna tone. And with a little back and forth, and you can get most colors you might be after. And the thing is, is because you're only using three uh, basic colors, or four, including the green, um, you will have harmonious color in everything you do. So the number one problem a lot of amateurs run into is like they've got you know 20 different colors on their palette and their paintings are not in harmony. And one of the defining characteristics of toneless work is just harmony. I mean, tonal harmony is what tonalism is about. This is not uh, well. It's probably going to be somewhat tonal because I just can't help myself, but. Um, I definitely try, didn't shift the colors out of the natural color spectrum, as is my usual way. I wonder if I get this a little closer. Uh, for you, that's good. That means I want to try and get zoomed in as much as I can. Yeah. Okay, again, there'll be other paintings showing technique, this isn't that. Um, look at some of the things I didn't do. I didn't do this. I thought about this other tree here. I opted out, don't need it. So that tree's gone. This tree's been radically modified. two trees somewhat modified and I don't even know what I'm gonna do down here we're gonna figure it out as we go um, yeah so let's mix a few in fact let's mix a healthy wholesome green not gonna be that easy with halo Oh, first of all, I'm going to show you how to do his, his, his black, and the black I use forever. There you go. Usually you need a lot more crimson than phthalo, because phthalo is a lot stronger color, but you can see, pretty dark. Colors out. 
Also, I think I think old Kevin is the guy to put me on the gambling, but I think Bob Rome also likes gambling. You know what I like gambling? They won't advertise on my channel. They didn't even answer me because I just am not big enough. But that's okay, gambling. I ain't mad at you. They should though, because a lot of you peeps do come around. So anyway, it's still see how it's still a little greenish. If we add a lot more crimson to that, again, pretty. It's a purpley black. It's a pretty color, and what it has over regular black is it has some life. Yeah. I'm not going to do my blacks first. I'm going to set that off to the side. Now that's another thing, working this way, generally you're going to want to set what you have off to the side so that we have to grab it, you know, to start with the constituent colors each time. So back into some sort of nice green. Let's do these. I'm going to do a lot more crimson than green. I'm going to bring in some yellow. Uh, it's still kind of fakey, but what will we keep adding crimson? We get less fakey. That's not a bad naturalistic green, right? I think we should make a bunch of that. So we'll just have that on our palette. The more crimson I add, the more natural the green feels. That's our dark green. And the light green, we'll add some of that. And like I said, I have the black in my palette because it was left over from some uh, figurative stuff I'm doing. Try not to use it. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and mix some more colors. Just have them ready. You could mix along if you like. Okay, so let's get that box to us a second. Can you see that? And let's zoom in a little bit. Just a touch. I know it's not that easy to see. Alright, so we've got this tone. Let's say it's a yellow ochre tone, right? Okay, so there we'll start with the yellow. It's going to be kind of like we did that one there. Yellow. Very small amount of crimson. So the amounts. This is making orange. To get into some ochres, we're going to do a little dot of blue. Yeah, that's looking good. And then white. And we're kind of into some ochre tones now. thing is with this sort of um, painting method, and we already have a darker bit over there, it's basically not that far from a yellow looker and our grass color. Now, you say, what about gray, man? Okay, we can do it. We can do almost anything with this palette, to be honest. It's, it is limited though, it's not infinite. Oh, sorry, you're looking at my little trash. It, that's just the paint rags there. I know, 
Such a fancy presentation. There we go. All right, what were we talking about? Gray. My, we got grays from the path. Although, I mean, do I want to paint that gray? I want to paint it brownish. But let's make gray anyway, just for fun. How do we make gray? Well, that's where you get into complementary theory. So, we've already mixed this color with... This color is nothing but phthalo green and alizarin crimson. Now, if you add white to this, you're going to get some kind of purpley tone. That's the crimson predominating. How do you kill the purple? Well, the yellow kills purple. Quite a pretty color. That's a bit green. A little more red. And you just keep back and forth and until you're happy. Um, I'm not happy with that yet. More crimson. And so complementary color theory. You really need to know that to mix colors with a limited palette. Red and green will cancel each other out to a large degree. That is looking pretty good. I'll take touch. The nice thing about Viridian and his palette. Viridian is not as potent as Thalo. Like you can see, I push that right into... Morning, Gray. Not a hundred percent neutral, but it's getting there. So, if it's too green, you add red. If it's too red, you add green. Yeah, and uh, you get really nice pastel tones with his approach. No question, I kind of like that. Um, I do want to brown it up so off to the side here you know this will make orange and that's the titanium white titanium white is the color killer yeah so this, uh, this video, this demonstration is really about color mixing. That's why I'm taking my time. A lot of times I do my color mixes. I do like that from the road. There's a tiny bit of blue in there. Little bits of this and that. Like initially when you put it in, you go, oh, that's not going to work. I do like that. You can see how that's a bit different from the ochre. And they can go anywhere near the black. Okay, so we have like most of the colors we need to kind of go after this, at least initially, yeah? Yeah. So, oh, oh no, blue sky. Same deal with blues, it's going to be a little more, phthalo is way more potent than um, ultramarine. What a fake looking color, eh? So it's too blue. And what cancels out blue? Green? No. Orange. Now, what we don't have handy is an orange. Let me get some real light. I will say, like, working this way, I think you... Okay, so we're gonna make, we're gonna actually make an orange over here. Because I don't want it to make orange every time I need it. So we'll just have some on the panel here. Andy. Pretty easy to get, like, a deep burnt sienna type tone with yellow and alizarin. That's probably enough. I'm gonna take a little of that. Now, so if it's too blue, the complementary of blue is orange. So if something's too blue, you add orange. And 
that is looking weird. Let's get some more crimson into that. At least that's neutral. Maybe a touch of blue again. Okay, you can see I'm finally getting into some more naturalistic blues. Yeah, so it's not that easy, but if you want to learn how to paint, if you want to learn how to mix colors, this is how you do it. Okay, now we are going to need an off-white slash gray. Basically a lighter version of what we just did. We'll start with some white. because it's too green right so you keep mixing until you neutralize things and in the process you get some pretty cool colors that's too green how many more crimson on my palette <clears throat> this is how I started folks and I had a big advantage in that I was a commercial illustrator I understood color really well but didn't understand paint necessarily all that. Maybe I have too much. Let's see. No, if I'm headed towards gray for the sky, that's actually pretty good. Let's get some white in there. That's not a bad gray. Pretty good. And you know it's good when you can't say, is that too green? Is that too red? We can always lighten it. I said, I'm going to keep this painting pretty loose. Pretty loose. So, yeah, I was talking about putting in my darks, but I like to get my sky in first. So let's go ahead and do that. Some oil in my brush. I just want to talk to you about limited color palette. I cannot make arguments for painting without black because life without black is just not worth living. <laughs> oh no, on a piece like this, you know, this is. You're, I, you don't want to just paint, like most of your photos, that white, the sky just could be something blown out. On the other hand, I don't recommend just painting, uh, uh, you know, um, everything just solid blue. Um, also, I'm a big believer in modulating, so we're going to modulate. Let's get some more crimson. see it doesn't look that blue here but I knew it went there I don't really remember what color Kevin paints on I haven't looked at his book uh, in a long time well, I've sold more than a few for old Kevin though because I'm a believer in his approach I think it's good 
See how it's different here than there. So I'm modulating, eh? It's subtly different, but different. As we move down, I'm grabbing some of that, some of that orange, some white. White will neutralize your colors to a large degree. Yeah, like that. And we know the sky is brighter here. Okay, so say don't get too jiggy with your a ton of paint on this brush. Don't get too jiggy with your skies. Don't get into a bunch of little intrig uh, intriguing and interesting cloud patterns. You definitely want to vary things, otherwise it won't read as a sky. You know some keeping some of my tree, but I'm not that worried about it. Can I help you, Denny? Oh yeah, you're opening my door, are you, Denny? Yeah, go away. You're yeah, a good dog. Some of these cases, I just want something underneath other than board color here. I'll be doing some tree stuff. Here you go. There you go, Mom. Didn't come in to visit, but. Now. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. I'm working very thin, by the way. I like this color. I feel like it's a bit green. So, what do we do? We'll get some of our orange into that. gets a little lighter in the bottom. Of course like in a lot of reference photos it's just blown out. That's nice. Uh, one thing about this particular method of working too is like uh, you do a lot of mixing with your brush.
just getting sorry. Like just grabbing some of that orangey tone I made. I can see if I need more of that too. Just make it now. So gonna make me an intermediate. Crimson stronger than the yellow, so you don't want to waste a ton of paint. Just start with a little bit. There's a nice orange for us. That'll make our lives easier. We didn't even use any of that nice. Oh yeah, the gray I mix, which we can use in that road anyway, but grab some of that. And if you're just like, say you're totally like not inspired, but you feel like you should do something, you could do an exercise where you just take these um, one, two, three, four, five colors try and mix every color uh, that you can think of, right? You'll learn the, the, the extent of the limited palette. In a hurry. And it's not like you have to be that creative. It's not even really that creative. It's more... I mean, there's problem solving involved. So it's not like you can be completely uncreative. I'm liking this. It's all right. And of course, if you add black to the scenario, um, heck, there's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Almost nothing. Because one of the biggest challenges is, say, to mix a neutral gray using, you know, white, yellow, alizarin crimson, uh, blue, and thalo green. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of back and forth. You'll get there, though. You can, you can do it. It can be done. got these basic tones in our brush let's go ahead and get in um, some of this here so yeah I am using black I don't care just hard again I'm not Kevin so I didn't paint with black in fact I could just use that instead of black I'll give you a little purpley feel it's nice actually I like that We'll get some movement. We'll do the shadows first. We're going to modulate that a little as we move up. I don't want it all to.
Yeah, like that. <clears throat> okay, now in the lighter area, so uh, I got this more brownish. Just add some more of this um, orange to this. Gonna modulate. Got some of that from our drawing stage over there. Put some of that in there. A little crimson. Yeah. So yeah, you you got to create some depth with your colors. That's one reason for modulating. Of course, you know I could just fill with this little patches in with the same color as that, but we're gonna lose. Um, Everything's going to start flattening out. And life ain't like that. Color's always changing and shifting. Even if you find your modulations are arbit arbitrary. Impressionist thinking, and I ain't no impressionist. I ain't. But I do think the limited palette is valuable, and so I guess my limited palette would include some black. And I mentioned this in another video. Kevin, uh, he does a bit of cheating, if you ask me, in that um, some of his stuff uses a series of neutral grays from. Uh, Gambling, which are all mixed to percentages, value percentages. Those are mixed with black and white, ivory black and white. So um, that's black. I know. I've said it before. You can see this that little orange I made is very handy. I think I'll make a big chunk of that. So, super handy orange. So when I started moving on from this palette, what did I add? Well, the first two colors I added was yellow ochre. I didn't have black. I painted without black for six years, something like that. I had yellow ochre, I added burnt sienna. Oh, because those colors are super valuable for landscape. Now one thing before we jump in, I think I might do is Mix a bit more of this brownish tone. Alright, how are we going to do that? Let's start with yellow. Let's start with red. Not too much. Remember the red's really strong. So your basic way to make brown with this palette. It's a little, a little blue. That little blue will give you the brown effect. First it gives you green. Bring in more crimson and you get into browns. And that table green is pretty potent. I don't even have my tube of green. It's probably sitting in my friend Joe's shed. I gave him all the uh, another good thing about this kind of palette, you can since 
since you're mixing all your colors up, it's pretty easy to match colors since you're always using the same. Um, I didn't mix very much, but you see, I got a pretty good match. Of course, you could say, yeah, well, running out of the tube, I always matches. And I say, hey, don't get saucy. Okay, I've got a few things to do here. It's a shame. because I'm going to be coming in and doing my trees. Well, I don't want to, I want to, I need that letter. I'll grab some ass. Happy with that. Uh, by the way, this painting is dedicated to my mom. I'm feeling that good. That was not so great. And she always encouraged me on my artistic journey. When she, once I told her what being an artist was what I wanted to do, she she went out and bought me a bunch of art supplies. And um, I was on my way. So, thanks, mom. Right, so it's at this point, so uh, here our palette, I mean this is a pretty little palette we've got, but uh, yeah, again one of the reasons for doing this today is I got colors drying on my large palette in my fridge, which that large palette's going to be moving over to the uh, new studio, and I find those, I find these in the thrift stores, so I'm going to have to start looking for another big one um, for home here, but... I think most of the things I'll be doing at home will be like the um, the nudes and, and little, you know, uh, whatever, um, specialty stuff. Let's get our brush wiped off. Like that. So, time to come in with some darks. I'm going to uh, do a Bob Ross with my brush here. Here you go, Tekka Tekka Tekka. Uh, all the Bob Ross is on uh, good old YouTube. Bob Ross is great. Uh, you can get a few things off Bob Ross. I mean, if I ever have to paint a mountain, I'll do his, uh, I'll do his shovel along with the uh, palette knife approach because it gets pretty convincing mountains, I'll tell you. Also for pine trees, his uh, technique where he uses the uh, Edge of a brush going to do, 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 do. very handy. Okay, so now we're gonna suck in some darks, and oh, we're not gonna use the black. We're gonna use this uh, chromatic black. So why is this called a chromatic black? Well, because it's basically two complementaries. It's green and red, but they're not strict analogous. Analogous? You think I? I yeah, I don't have no real education, you guys. Um, it was a two purple, then you add a little green. Until you get right in that dead sweet spot, that's about right. Purple, touch more green. called chromatic black. <coughs> you can buy a um, gamblet sells one. Well, I 
I got a little oil in that. Those are both transparent colors too, so. You've seen me mix this, so just let me leave this on the table for now so I mix some more. Let's get these glasses off. I'm doing a little of that because I want some, even though I know the light's hidden there, I just want it underneath what I'm doing. bringing back memories for years of futzing around with this chromatic black. I don't have to futz with it no more because I just pull out some black black. I don't know, I was doing toneless work with chromatic black. Which, you know, let's face it, one of the reasons I got out of that was because um, <laughs> toneless weren't using chromatic black, they were using black black. some things on top of there. Now we're gonna pick up some white. That's one of the reasons why we just see me do this technique with a lot of paint on my brush. And I gotta get some more oil. Because that's how you're gonna get those sorts of effects. This knocks this solid, juicy black back. When 
when you're doing trees, you want to vary things. Don't do things all straight. Always with a bit of curve. And I am doing a line on each side, although we know the shadows on that side, but I have a reason for that. And it's because I'm going to be coming over the top with something, either brown or gray. Or Yeah, you can see deviating from the reference a bit, but it's okay. This is a reference I need to be deviated from because painted straight up. And uh, geez, I try and find the. I, I don't know if this is the exact reference that I used last time, or if it was just a very similar scene. But I painted this; it was back on. Back in 2008 or 9, and um, on canvas, I wasn't even in, pan in panels yet. We know the shadows here. Never hesitate. Like in dead, dead areas like corners and things, you know, you can see what I did. Did I bother painting all these little tweaky details? No. No. Yeah, right. We're back. Well, at some point, I will zoom in but again this video it's all about it's all about color man it's all about color man and we're doing it i always off camera i mix myself a little more and it's brown because it's gonna help us we're done with the darks i think a little more darks let's see that was my lovely wife knocking on the door see if i wanted some tea some of that, some of that. Right. Some dark options. Just want this underneath. Some of the stuff going on. trees they don't bear much resemblance to those trees because those trees wouldn't paint up too good oh, the only way you could get them paint up good I reckon would be to do like a photo real thing where you're just making exact 
copy of the photo. Then people will judge it on the same level as a photo and they'll accept it. But yeah, so into this mix I would bring some yellow. What will happen? When I get the dark green I'm craving. What did, what did you just grab, Mike? Don't worry about that. Don't worry about what's over here. Okay. That's my secret. Yeah, this is kind of a, oh, maybe a little blue. Pretty that up a little. Looks like I'm doing this whole painting with a number two, but uh, that's all right. I'm a zero, sorry. So, so there. Voyage, glasses off. some wet sky you know you can do a few things but you gotta be careful because you're going back in I'm planning on plopping some other prettier colors on top Yeah, and um, this green thing got nothing on Mike's green, but you could make Mike's green or a version of it with this palette um, and some black, right? What are you doing down there? Just some more green. Yes, I did. I grabbed some black. My screen is hands of yellow, not uh, cad yellow. Cad yellow is kind of opaquey, so it gives you kind of a chalky, ugly color. Where the hands of gives you a really pretty color. Well, we're doing okay, and we do have harmony, and that is important. This is harmonious. Now, most of my paintings are harmonious, but they're harmonious because I know my colors, and um, harmony is coming from experience and my brain and stuff. So. You could easily paint out of harmony with my typical palette if you were of a mind to. Wouldn't be hard. Watch out for big lumpy stuff floating out. I've left this here, so I assume I want it. I had tight with something though. coming through there but again this kind of reminds me of my old uh, paintings too because there's always tons of red coming through and the red's nice because it's a uh, complementary to most uh, to green so it gives your painting a nice vibration Let's lay some of that. Actually, let's not. I was going to lay some of that, but I think if we do too much, so the real problem is we, we don't want the same greens everywhere. And that's one of the things with the slow of the palette. So, what we're going to do is we're going to grab some of this. This is my sort of the other color I mixed. Not that far off from the board color. And this reading is pretty dang green anyway. I don't know if it's because I had a bunch of green in my brush or let's modulate that a little. Let's bring 
and some yellow and some crimson it's definitely harder to modulate for me with this palette but I, I make the attempt anyway it's like just like I make the attempt to modulate when I'm using a palette which is you know only three colors or two colors like a, um, the monochromatic palette with just black now again this is underneath so touch of crimson Doesn't look dramatic, dramatically different crimson or greenish feeling and back here a touch of white the white will change everything won't it which is sort of the reason I was for it let's get some of that tap of that So what do you see me doing? Well, these are all kind of reddish. When I pop some greens on top, that'll be nice. But if I didn't have a little bed like this, I'd be I'd be struggling to do the whole thing with just these few greens I've got. That's right, I'm throwing some in there. That's right. And so you can take something like this, put a couple dots of green, the whole thing already is green. I've said it before, I'll show you it again. Yep, like that, and let's bring some yellow in. Now remember, yellow is for many intents and purposes. You really want to think of yellow in terms of being green. Granted, when you add red, it doesn't act like green. We gotta modulate. We got to figure out a way to show <coughs> well, I mixed all this. I didn't even use none of it. Oh my god. Now that just means we can go a little more
Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of regressing here, but I'm regressing for you. Because everyone wants to know more about how I get colors, how I learned how to mix colors, number one question, the emails I get. Well, <clears throat> this is how I learned to mix color, by starting with a very limited palette. <clears throat> Let's use some more. I don't feel like uh, putting any paint away today. That is that color. Just kind of breaking up the all in a row thing. So let's go into the the lighter green I mixed, and this isn't my lightest green, of course, but this is kind of perceptually definitely green. Green. You know what, before I get too involved with that, I have some paint, this other brush. Oh, I, I cleaned it, but let's do these tree trunks. I'm going to go with some of this. Let's go into that. Oh, yeah. I cooled it off a bit, but I'll use some of that and warm it up. Kind of a neutral tone with the green. Oil, so I don't have to struggle here. Some of this that we mixed. You don't want everything painted with one color. Yeah, this would be easier with the smaller brush, it would be easier with the different brush, like a little sable or something, but... There's a lot to be said for 
the struggle of using a brush that's a little too big to create a painterly effect and get some interest, which is what we're doing. And you can see why I put the dark underneath. And I don't want those the exact same color as that. Red it up a little. I've got this color here I mixed. Grab more crimson. Now we need some oil. And maybe a touch of black. I don't want them lighter than that. You could always like let the painting dry. And you know, do some little subtle things with thin down blacks and stuff, but it's a pretty good way to get your trees. Yeah, and I do hold my breath quite often when I'm doing this kind of thing. subtly different grade than that. But these subtle differences they add up because life is full of millions and millions of colors. Millions probably. It's a lot. It's probably good. Well, you're pretty happy. And we'll be coming at probably some brighter highlights on those. Maybe. The problem with that is that it might start competing with the sky, so, or not competing, but it'd be hard to tell where, where's the tree, where's the sky, and this kind of thing. You gotta think about that. Anyway, I wanted to get that in before I started getting that sort of green, and we did. some kind of foliage. This does seem like it's a little all in a row. Nice. So we just had a dip or a bump. We don't add bumps. We're adding dips. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the edge.
Yeah, getting close. I can think of one thing. Maybe a little more dark. So one thing you do always want to pay attention to, you don't have a video tree at the top thicker than a trunk. You gotta, you gotta fix it if it's like that. You got it. Nice. Yeah, so one reason like I kind of do a little smearing, a little blending of things right now is because we're getting ready to sock on some of our lighter, brighter bits. I think we heard this on the EU. Yeah, the guy that comes up with a true random, he gonna be rich. Thank you so much, those of you that have uh, sent me donations of things. Man, I really appreciate it. That's some very generous donations, and it's just like really going to help. Really helpful. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you are of a mind to do something like that, go to my site. There is that subscribe star, which, you know, whatever. But well, you, you can do that if you like that better. But uh, there's a donate button on my site you can use. Works real good. I know God knows if you're one of the people that's, you know, broke and wondering how you're going to make it. Yeah, don't worry about it. You save it for a break job? Do the break job. I want to modulate the screen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sacrifice this bit of gray I have left here. Because over here I don't want, see that's nice.
Yes, this feels all the same height, so I, had to, I actually had to, because I just sacrificed my gray, I had to make a little, but again, that's one of the reasons I have the black spinel hair. I, I just made a gray very quickly. I showed you what's involved with making a gray, a chromatic gray, starting with just those colors, and it's a bit of work, but it's a good exercise, because I know how to do it, you know. I know how to do it, because, uh, done it. Alright, so some of that. Now here, I'm going to bring in some more yellow. I think I squeezed out too much color. Uh, I especially hate, like, burning the, uh, the cat yellow. That's just pricey. Great pigment, but pricey. Well, over in this side, so we added some gray over there. Let's get into some. Crimson's over here. Trust me, it'll still perceptually read as green. I just don't want everything the same everywhere. That ain't no way to, that ain't no way to rock and roll. We'll put a few dots of something else in there too. On top. kind of getting me out of a one in a row thing. Uh, you don't want everything in one straight parallel. That's a nice color. It's also, I like how it's kind of dusky. Let's bring in a little black spinel, a little more, a little more brick spinel, a little more, well, oh, it's too much crimson. Oh, that's going to read as green too. You'd be amazed how many reds you can throw in a color. It still reads as green. That's down here. That's kind of in some kind of shadow or something. <clears throat> We're not that far off. We're not too far off. Yep, yeah, and now some um, smokeries, oakeries. Not that we're, maybe we make it into a little more green. And uh, for me, wow. Interesting. Oh, you definitely get some bright greens, yeah. Don't worry about it. Some real crunchy bright greens. But for now, let's do some grass, do some ochres. Ah, I did a good job with that yellow ochre. Uh, it looks bright, just dead on the yellow. Yellow ochre is an easy color to mix, but it's so prevalent in the landscape. It's one of the first colors I added. Bring in a little crimson here. And then some blue. And I don't look nothing like what I want. But... I wanted a darker ochre because I used up all that reddish tone that we had mixed. Now that this was a little lighter than I wanted to be. Let's fill some things in here. 
it feels green. Maybe some of that orange. That's that orange I mixed. I say you're painting like a, a park and there's a big lawn and a big just all straight up against the bush. Make sure you always like break it up a little. Don't ever paint something like a lawn, you know, with some kind of sweeping or soul stroke. Now this is a place where I've really debated things and I think what I'm gonna do is just come in with some lumber, use the grasses, and I'm thinking it's one of my favorite ways to get the grasses, by the way, is like this sort of move I'm making with the brush. Counterintuitive. And one thing you might be thinking is like, oh, I know what I'll use for grass. I'm going to get my sable, my little tiny sable brush out. And I'm going to do one million tiny strokes. Then I look a lot like grass. And I say, no, you're fired. Well, this has been fun doing this limited palette with you today, and I've been wanting to do this for a little while because um, this is how you learn to paint, folks. This is the way, you know, this is how you learn what your colors can do. Don't, uh, you know, you want to know how I mix the color, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter how I mix the color. There's 20 different ways to mix most colors. Uh, but if you start with a limited palette like this, um, you'll, you'll have a good sense of what your colors could do. And now old Richard Schmidt, who is a genius, he really is, is a genius painter. Very high IQ, that guy. Let's get some more yellow and more white. More yellow, more white. Um, he, in his book, um, Everything I Know About Painting, or Alla Prima, Everything He Knows About Painting. He's got a whole section where he just gives you squares. You, 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 you take all your colors in your palette, and you mix these little color squares. I've never done it. I learned on a job making paint. some brighter stuff. We got sunlight coming in. You can see we're getting a bit brighter as we go. This is what we're ready. Am I ready for that? Yeah. Real orangey.
my thinking is I don't really want to put this sort of paint away because so it's probably on a little. Let's get some. And that's exciting because some actual real reds in there. It's not in the reference, but it's exciting. I'm excited. And that's one great solution. Aries, like, it's a bunch of boring nothing. Sorry, foliage. I don't mean to insult you. Yeah, well, it's that we. Okay. Fun, fun. Alright. There. And there's a question now. We want to get into our lightest ochres. Or do we want to get into our brightest greens? I'm inclined to go for the brightest greens first. screens. What do we got here? I'd say before we knew that, what was this? This was ugly green right here. super ultimately tweaky with this painting because mostly it's just a limited palette demo for you. Uh, although I'm pretty happy with it. It's a little painting. I don't really like how fake that looks. I'm going to put a few dots of this and that in there. Much different than what's in the reference, actually, so that's good. Here I am gonna have some brighter greens on top. I got a lot of holes, uh, and I don't want a dense tree thing, so I don't mind a lot of holes. But I gotta need some spots to put the brighter bit on. Also, I like to take. I like a lot of little holes and things up towards the end of the picture. A lot of this will be covered with um, Frame Rabbit, but even still, you can see that superior. Anyone can see. And a little mixing, and the way we're going to mix down here is like this. With this kind of little motion I call. Create some nice faux detail. That's one reason I like to do this. Also, we're getting ready to seal it all up with the highlights. And you 
you don't want excessively crusty detail everywhere in your painting. Really, the best the best thing you want in the highlight areas. And those, a lot of times, you'll see master painters will put those on thicker as well. Although, I think a lot of the reason for that was um, because um, you have to land the uh, lead white pretty thick. Where's that sky brush? sometimes I can do the tree limb or two coming off of here um, might not be the time to do it right now You live longer. Yeah, and I think this gets me into a frame of mind where I'm gonna go a little brighter in that sky. It's pretty subdued, pretty held back. thicker here. So like I said, I don't feel like putting all that paint away today. I'm transitioning, okay? I've got this other studio going on. I've been working on that. I hit a bit of a snag and I need some things from the uh, big box store out here. But let's click and collect. Problem there though is like it's pretty hard to judge from pictures online. But, uh, I'll do my best. Just need some progression in this guy. Tweaky, don't get too patterny. I don't want it as bright over here either. Okay, you notice uh, I like to get a little like. This is one of the spots where I might take a little time to show some little brush strokes. The rest of my brush strokes, just a byproduct of me trying to get the image across. it I do I'm coming into this 
white now with some of this. Okay, so your edges, right? Oh, this was pretty dark before I started doing that, but that's all right. Lighter. Just think you can smear your edges together. I have lots of techniques for edges. Just send me a donation and you know who you are. I am humbled and honored. Thank you so much. And it will help. It's things I need. I've set up a new studio and gosh, I um, just really don't know how many people are going to be dropping by to buy paintings. I hope a lot. No, it's, not, it's not like I'm trying to manifest anything different than that. Gosh, I keep getting this skid now straight on me. It's been a struggle, man. It's been a struggle. Every time we do it all the way. You can fix everything. Don't. Just leave it. Let it breathe. Let it live. Leave it alone. Don't stop picking on it. Gosh, you guys. I don't want to stop. It's better off being an honest attempt. It's, it's got some life in it that can breathe. If you think you're going to refine everything and fix everything, what you end up doing is you end up killing all the life. Now that bright white really helped. I think that's nice. Ooh, edge technique. 11 D million and three. Okay, time to suck in that light green like I promised you. So what are we gonna do? Well, we have the dark green in the mix. Let's just lay that out. Huh? Chunk off to the side. Let's see what happens. I went too far. It's okay though, because I don't need to keep that yellow. I don't need that cad yellow. I don't need it in my fridge. Use it up. Theta blue, if I gotta throw some of that away, I'll be okay with that. Off the side here. And we gotta we gotta adulterate it a little bit. We'll use some of this. Otherwise it'd be too fake. That's a nice color. That's our lightest and brightest green. with oil. That's really not that uh, economically wise, but hey. It's not like I really need to clean the brush. I'm getting the oil because I want a lot of movement. Eric. 
lifter. Now I don't want to turn the whole passage into light green. That's not what I want. These are little highlights. And it's the last thing that should go on as well. There's going to be some ochre highlights. I just want a little green there. I didn't want all the green up in the trees. Seems like it's a little too bright. Yeah, so even me, as long as I've been doing this, I was tempted to get me a sable. You know, you're better off with the corner of a big brush. Not that this is a huge brush, but... You got light hitting things here. polka dot syndrome but you can start with a few dots and then link them up See that in the reference? I like that. in there. We're getting close. Getting close. If you're getting bored, you go, oh my god. Look, just, just relax. This also, by the way, this sort of move helps with the pokey dots. Pokey dots. <laughs> Polka dots. Yeah.
Yep, I like that. So, get into our ochre. Light ochre, very light. Almost white. What do we got? We got some of this, this, and this. Let's start out with that as a foundation. I don't know what that blue is doing in there, but it's all right. We don't really have any yellow left, so hopefully I don't have to do a lot of mixing here. I don't love that color. about throwing away yellow. I used it all. That's a good solid ochre. Titanium white's not super expensive, so I don't usually worry about throwing some out of the way. And I don't want more yellow in that. Just give it a green flare. I'm gonna go with the tiniest amount of crimson. And it's not the dream color I make it if I had some cat orange, but nice color, nice painting. So I got um, extra oil because I want to make some gestural moves. And you're still looking at the reference. We're both looking at the reference. What I should have done is mixed up some of that orange. I would be crying though I didn't have cat orange.
So, limited palette. Also, maybe you've seen how we can make a painting with references less than stellar. I felt like getting a little yellow in there. It just felt kind of blah. And I think I'll follow that up a little more here. all the zillions of little holes and things there I don't, that stuff don't work I've been there done that I'm just telling you you can try go ahead maybe you'll make it work the only way to make it work as far as I know is just start getting all photo real because what it does is it creates without even hold, I call them holes they're not holes they're little dapples right See if my pizza place is open today. I, I heard that places are open for takeaway. I just been cooking, man. Yeah. All right, so. This is a painting of a trail I used to ride my bike down to go to work. My thinking was I had this like sedentary job, you know, as a commercial illustrator.
going to add a touch of that too, will Some proper fakey greens. These two the rest of this yellow, hey. So it looks fake, add red. Right? Your greens look fake, you add red. Look, suddenly much less fake. Still pretty bright, pretty odd. More greens in here. Joining up a few spots. Director eye, we want stuff going on there, we know what there so I mean the details there I just break it up it's a bit like uh, you would do with the focus on the camera yeah pretty happy with that <clears throat> we use most of our color. We got some of that, 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 that. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, goodbye. On to the phone book. And all. Let's zoom in. Noise pain. Why? <coughs> Noise pain. So where you have these little breaks like this catches the eye. So now you can use that. Cute swamps can be a problem though. I'm 
watch out for that. That's probably my favorite way. And I usually spare you all this because it's boring and you're already tired. Thank you for joining me today. Um, yeah, limited palette. I'll try and label this video in a way that people starting out will find it. And of course, if you email me or something, I'll be sending you notice. How do I mix colors? That's how you learn. Okay, so. Thank you for joining me today. I will be back very soon. Well, I don't know, very soon. It's been a little while since my last video, so I wanted to get you something today. I could have been in there putting things together, but I thought, no, nah, I'm going to make a video. I'm going to get this on the computer. I'm going to upload it. We'll try for tonight or tomorrow morning. So today is uh, May 7th, and it's uh, Thursday. It'll be May 7th to Thursday when you see this, so I'm ahead of you. <laughs> anyway, uh, take good care, stay out of trouble, um, be kind to your family, and uh, try your best to not hate your enemies, and try to be patient in this time of, um, you know, societal turmoil, and um, we'll all get through it, and art's a good way to do that, so... Uh, until I come back with another video, um, take good care. Stay out of trouble. Well, that's paint on my finger, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that.